Okay. Oh, let's see. I, I need a step. I'm so <laughs> sure. I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, thank you so much for having me. Uh, thank you to all, um, all of you at home for joining us. I can see we have 66 participants at home. And in the room, there's at least 40 people more, maybe. So we're definitely over 100. And this is wonderful. Thank you so much for the invitation to be here and to speak today. I'd like to especially thank Ken and Meg and Wendy for the opportunity to come here today to mark this very special anniversary. As Ursin mentioned, I am the curator of the Petrie Museum of Egyptian and Sudanese Archaeology at University College London. And we have a very special role in the history of the Welcome Collection, and in particular relating to the distribu distribution of those objects. We're still very much in the early stages of the work at the Petrie Museum in understanding, particularly our archival holdings relating to the distribution. It seems like every week we find something new that adds to our um, understanding of this process, but it's been a real joy to dig through the archives and find out more information about this very important part of the history of museum Egyptology in the UK. And for that, I'd like to say a very special thank you to Ken, as ever, for his kind of hive mind of all of this information, for kind of sparking this interest for me um, recently, to Alexandra Everly at the Welcome Collection from the Transcribe Welcome Project, which you'll be hearing more about, and also to Dulcie. Um, when I first started at the Petrie Museum as curator, six and a half years ago, I think it was in my first week, I got an email from Dulcie to say that she was very interested in the distribution of the welcome uh, material from UCL to different museums. And it was at that point that I actually, my eyes completely opened to this, this huge distribution of objects and to your fantastic blog post, which is still very much active. I referred back to it again when I was uh, planning this paper. So thank you so much for all your hard work um, relating to the distribution. So today I'd like to share a taste of what's in the Petrie Museum collection and archive relating to the distribution an insight to some of the people behind the collection and also to the potential of this material for future study. And like I said, it's really scratching the surface. So if you have any thoughts, feedback, um, questions, please do let me know. <coughs> Excuse me. I'd like to start with this um, the record card that I found in the Petrie Museum archive. It's really quite a sort of random note, but it highlights the main stages of the story behind the distribution um, relate, as relating to the Petrie Museum. And here there are three main stages highlighted. Uh, lovely. So I think this might have been written by someone called Georgina Russell, who you'll hear more about. And she was the transfer officer at the Welcome Collection in the 1980s. So in 1964, the Welcome Collection of Egyptian and Sudanese material was received at UCL from the Welcome. The entire Egyptian collection was presented to UCL at that stage and arrived in 350 packing cases. For any of you that know the Petrie Museum, I'm assuming many of you have visited or know the space, you know it's tiny. My heart just breaks when the question was, can we expand the Egypt Centre? Okay. Um, yes, please do it. But my goodness me, if we had one of these galleries, I would be so happy with that footprint. You can imagine when all of these crates were piled into the Petrie Museum as it is today, there was absolutely no space for anything else. And it took up a huge, huge footprint in the museum, in the main gallery. The material was sorted and documented by a dedicated small team of staff and volunteers. And I'll always bring you back to that. The team at UCL did their best at all times to try to make sense of this collection um, during the documentation and during the distribution. Doesn't mean that there weren't some really odd decisions made. And we're going to talk about some of those as well. So in 1972, we're moving forward all the collection was dispersed from UCL, except what the Petrie Museum wanted to keep, which was around about a thousand objects. 
which stayed, stayed at the Petrie Museum collection. And this included more than 600 objects from Sudan, mainly from the site of Meroe. There was a clear focus on retaining objects from Sudan for the Petrie Museum, where gaps were perceived to be in the collection. Um, at least not for the early Sudanese material, but for later Sudanese material. And then this note just highlights, oh, where are we? In 1968, I love this comment, question mark, bulk of Petri material accessioned, but their accessions register gives no dates whatever, not even date of entry. Um, this is still a challenge that we work through today. And it's also the card, this card kind of sums up many of the stumbling blocks that different researchers have had with the welcome material over the years. But again, I'm delighted that um, the work of Ken, the work of Alexandra at the Welcome and the, the Transcribe Welcome project is shedding very vital light on these problems, but also finding solutions. And as part of this, detective work is just so important. For those of us who work with museum collections um, in different capacities, we all know this. And so much of the Transcribe Welcome project is, is adding to our knowledge um, not only of our own collection, but to collections all around the country. So let's highlight some of the individuals involved in the history of the Welcome Collection at UCL. There are many people behind all of this work, but I want to highlight the following individuals for their determination um, in a time, as I said, of very few resources, um, great energy and enthusiasm, not a lot of space, money, um, and they did their absolute best uh, to process, document and display um, the welcome material at the Petrie and to distribute it elsewhere. So um, on the left hand side here, you have Barbara Adams, who I'm going to talk about in more detail shortly. Um, she was the curator of the Petrie Museum for many years. You have on the right hand side, a man called David Dixon. David Dixon was appointed at UCL to classify the welcome objects on what was called a welcome fellowship. So this is just as the welcome material came to UCL. He subsequently became a full lecturer and then honorary curator of the Petrie Museum. We've got some very interesting archival material at the Petrie, which is from around 1960, indicating that originally the welcome trustees indicated, uh, intended to sell the collection to the United States. So that was their first sort of um, approach, I guess. Um, and Rosalind Janssen, who wrote um, the wonderful book, a The First Hundred Years of Egyptology at UCL, she states that David Dixon brought advanced news of this to his old teacher, Professor Walter Emery, the Egyptologist, who, feeling that it would be wrong if it left Britain, prevailed upon the trustees to present the entire Egyptian assemblage to UCL. And so again, we're working through this correspondence to try to establish more of these details. At that point, the welcome collection then duly arrived at UCL, still in their 350 packing cases, having been in offsite storage since 1946. And so I'll talk about how it wasn't only ancient material from the Welcome Collection that arrived at UCL. We also have storage cases and, um, and books and storage cupboards associated with them. And Rosalind Janssen states that space had to be found in the museum's already crowded cupboards for the new antiquities. A second story for the building was even mooted, if only. Um, one day, one day that will happen, I'm sure. Uh, in the centre here, we have uh, Professor Harry Smith, who was honorary curator of the Petrie Museum between 1963 and 1970. He was also Edwards Professor of Egyptian Archaeology and Philology from 1970 to 1986 at UCL. And he also worked very closely on the documentation of the welcome material. Now, in the late 1960s, when the museum was full of these crates, work on the Welcome Collection eventually came to a complete standstill. And 
a lot of the um, uh, crates were also stored in the basement of a building opposite the museum at UCL, and apparently also in an annex on Tottenham Court Road, um, which is, um, for those of you who don't know, is the main road near um, UCL. And Janssen states that the situation became so acute and the proper utilization of the Petrie collection so impeded that in 1970, Professor Smith agreed a dispersal scheme with the Wellcome Trustees. Only, again, only that material uh, directly relating to the department's own interests being retained, including objects relating to Flinders Petrie and, as I mentioned, objects relating to Sudan. So, a whole series of other museums around the UK were identified as suitable recipients for material from the Welcome Collection. In particular, there was a real focus on museums that had suffered damage during uh, World War II. And this included Liverpool, Bristol, Birmingham, Durham, and of course, the Egypt Centre in Swansea. And as I mentioned, we, we uh, hold a very important archive of material relating to this distribution, including uh, lists of crates from the distribution in the 60s with annotations saying this object went to this place, this object was moved to this crate and then back to this crate and then moved to that place. Again, detective work is essential when trying to uh, decode some of these lists. And I'll mention shortly that there was a, um, a second transfer of some welcome material to UCL in the 1980s. And we also hold archival material relating to that. Some of these lists uh, mention the welcome numbers. So these are the accession numbers from the, the welcome collection. That's if you're lucky. <laughs> Often you, as, as Meg was saying with the, with the, the sale list, you mainly get general object descriptions. For example, ostraca or shabtis or my favorite, pots. <laughs> so we're very slowly working through the digitization of these lists and the transcriptions. We want to be able to make them more widely available um, as with all of the Petrie Museum archival holdings. So watch this space. Importantly, we also hold a series of welcome slips and object cards. So these are very important um, small record cards that came to, some of which came um, with the objects to UCL, some of which were created later, for example, by Barbara Adams as she was cataloging the material. So we hold three different categories of object card. Bear with me on this one. Welcome cards of objects in the Petrie Museum. No welcome cards, but objects that have welcome numbers on them with no card. And no card, uh, welcome card or number on the object, which requires further digging through, for example, sales catalogues to get more information. So there's a kind of stratigraphy of uh, of information in these cards. Some of them are they're wonderful. You have the welcome number, um, you have our accession number, our UC number, and a lot of information that can immediately direct you to where you need to go. Some of them are more challenging. But as I mentioned, um, we're digitizing more of these documents and working with the Transcribe Welcome Project, hopefully, to be able to host these online and also to um, add them to the Transcribe Welcome uh, Project um, uh, digitized archive itself. I'd also like to thank Alexandra. I'm not sure if she's uh, with us online today. Um, a while back, she uh, kindly offered that we could use the Welcome uh, collections card scanners and I really will take her up on that at some point. So also just to highlight in uh, our archival um, collection at the Petrie Museum, we also have material relating to objects that were in the welcome collection through sale. So a bit like what Meg was um, was telling us just previously this morning. So objects that um, were bought at auction, for example. So we have material relating to um, the McGregor collection sale at Sotheby's in 1922. 
So again, this all ties into this idea of object biography. You were always finding these new kind of uh, layers in the biography of objects in the collection, um, which really helps us helps us learn more about them in a more sort of holistic uh, way. And they, these documents help us out a lot where provenance is lacking. So it could be, as I'll mention, an object um, label in a case might say unprovenanced welcome collection. This is very common. Um, but if we go back through the archive, we find these snippets of information where we can say, OK, you know, it came through the, the welcome collection, but it was actually part of the McGregor sale. McGregor got it from this place or it was linked to this individual. So at least if you don't have a um, secure provenance, you can take a shot and put a question mark after it. Um, and again, it's just kind of, you know, working towards along that long path of object biography to gather as much information as possible. And again, sometimes we're lucky enough to have um, surviving labels that are linked to the sales, linked to welcome, few and far between, let's say, but when we find them, uh, it's a great thing. So I'd just like to mention briefly a few of the sites that are represented at the Petrie Museum um, through the Welcome Collection. So again, Sudanese material was seen as being an appropriate focus for the Petrie Museum's retained objects. So we have material from John Garstang's excavations at the site of Meroe from 1909 to 1914 on behalf of the University of Liverpool, where his teams of local workers and his wife, Marie, who you can see in the photograph there, excavated amongst many other finds, um, beautiful uh, sandstone sculptures and other objects with a mixed Meroitic Hellenistic style. So this is one a very good example of an object from Meroe um, that entered the collection through the welcome. This is a sandstone statue of a flute player from the Royal Bath site at Meroe. The reason I wanted to highlight this is that when this object came into the Petrie Museum collection, it had a head. But in the 1970s, unfortunately, the head was stolen from the museum. So this is all about us being transparent about the history of the collection, but also, you know, the fact always highlighting this idea that just because an object, um, how can I say, museums do their best to look after objects. Of course, we all do our very best, um, but events like this happen. Uh, it's incredibly sad, but it does mean now that that information is, is lost relating to the head of the statue. Um, adding another layer to the very complex object biography uh, for this particular piece. We also have objects such as a very rare fragment of wall decoration on the left-hand side here. This is a glazed uh, terracotta disc in a Hellenistic style of a woman's face, also from the bathhouse at Meroe. Um, we have material from Palace 294 at Meroe, which is a very important royal site excavated by Garstang and his Sudanese workforces, um, where he found a cachette with many high quality objects, including this wonderful um, faience ankh, it's around this, this size. Uh, for those of you at home, 25 centimeters. Um, and this is inscribed with the name and epithets of the ruler Aspelta. I wanted to highlight this object in particular because it's always in the top 10 objects in the collection for visitors. This is something that visitors absolutely love and that we've had 3D printed so that they're able also to handle and use in educational um, contexts. So skipping through quickly, you've already seen this photograph, very colonial looking Sir Henry uh, welcome at the site of Jebel Moya in Sudan which is around 250 kilometers southeast of Khartoum. He financed and was personally involved in the, the first excavations at this site over four seasons from 1910 to 1914. And material from this very important site is now housed at the Petrie Museum, but also the Ashmolean Museum, British Museum, Science Museum and elsewhere. 
I wanted to highlight this as a bit of an anomaly because we received Jebel Moya material through the welcome distribution in the 1960s, but we also have correspondence to show that some of the Jebel Moya material was also presented uh, in 1946 by the welcome collection to UCL. Again, adding a whole new layer to our understanding of the welcome material. As I mentioned, we don't only hold ancient objects, but we have um, in our um, curatorial library at the Petrie Museum, we have these uh, copies of the excavation reports of the Jebel Moya and Abu Ghali excavations, which is another of Welcome's excavations in Sudan. Um, and we have these uh, wonderful book plates in the front of these um, publications from the Welcome Historical Medical Library. And again, it would have been decided in the 1960s that it was appropriate for these books to stay with the collection at UCL. We have some very beautiful material from the site of Amarna in Egypt, uh, mainly from the 1930s um, excavation seasons by the Egypt Exploration Society. Um, so these are mainly uh, glass fragments objects relating to, in particular, um, ancient technologies, which is something Flinders Petrie himself was very interested in, um, but also a small number of stone and faience objects, including a very beautiful um, quartzite relief of an Amarna princess. Conscious of time, so I shall skip forward. When it comes to the Welcome Collection, this is often what we find at the Petrie Museum. So this, uh, working with Transcribe Welcome and also the Egypt Centre, provided a great impetus for us to try to learn more about these unprovenanced objects, as I mentioned. So it could be that um, our catalogue might mention that, you know, provenance is unknown, but we don't have a welcome number. We do have a welcome number, but we don't have a provenance. We know that it's ex-welcome collection, but we don't have a provenance. So for me, it's um, it's really a joy to be able to build up these um, object biographies again and to try to um, add more information to our knowledge, uh, particularly of provenance behind these objects. I'd like to highlight on uh, highlight the dedicated work by curatorial volunteers during the pandemic who worked virtually to improve the object records for these objects, including in particular Kyle Lewis Jordan and Daniel Bailey, who added welcome numbers to over 600 object records. There's still a lot to do, but they did a, a, a huge amount of work. As I mentioned, the 1964 distribution of the collection to UCL was not only objects, but also cases. So you'll be able to see many of these cases still on display in the Petrie Museum today, um, described as pyramid cases, and also this flatbed case where we display some of our um, Hawara portraits. These are our WEC cases, W-E-C, for Welcome Egyptology Collection. They're beautiful things in themselves, artifacts in themselves. I'm sure you'll all agree. They are, um, how can I say? They're sometimes a challenge to work with, but they look beautiful. Okay, so just to finish up, I'd like to highlight also the distribution of objects from the Welcome Collection to UCL in the 1980s. So we know that 475 further objects arrived in 14 crates, um, these are mainly from the site of Koptos in Upper Egypt, and these arrived to um, UCL in 1980 when they were formally acquired. And Barbara Adams, again, the curator of the Petrie Museum for more than 36 years in the 1960s to 1990s, um, oversaw the lifting of all of this material by volunteers a very, very small team of volunteers. Barbara Adams is a great inspiration to me. I would have loved to meet her. Um, I hope we would have got on. Who knows, but hopefully we would have. Um, and this huge amount of work was completed a year later in October, 1981. We've got some great correspondence relating to the second distribution. And I wanted to highlight this letter here. Um, which was from Barbara Adams to jo Georgina Russell, the transfer officer at the Welcome at, um, at the time. And Barbara says that now I have the voluntary worker attacking the messy Welcome card index, sorting it into order and throwing out duplicate cards. 
then she can match it with the objects that are here. We've got another letter from 1983. Um, Barbara Adams, again to Georgina Russell, said that her lady volunteer has not completed the task of checking the welcome material here. What I can say at present is that there are many cards for which we have no objects and quite a few objects for which we have no cards. Um, and uh, Georgina Russell writes back in 83, sending a general letter um, to the recipients of the welcome collection uh, material to say that the Petrie Museum has cards for a large number of the objects which passed through its hands in the 1960s. And Barbara Adams says that she will be happy to send you any cards she has if you will send her a list of numbers. And this work very much still remains a collaborative effort. We will do our very best to send you information on the archival material at the same time. So continuing this legacy of Barbara Adams and others. Um, so please do get in touch. So I would just like to finish off by highlighting um, some of our current work and, and future possibilities around the welcome collection at the Petrie. So we will endeavour to continue to improve object records and to add welcome numbers to online um, records, object records, to support further research. We hope to collaborate further with the Egypt Centre and the Transcribe Welcome Project to share resources and further develop our understanding of the distribution process. We want to share further stories of the people behind the distribution and shed further light on their work and achievements. And we want to work more closely with the different receiving institutions to better understand their archives and collections. 30 more seconds and then I will stop talking. I am here not only to represent the Petrie Museum, but to mark a very, very important transfer to the Egypt Centre. So this is Jed Hall. You will meet him in the museum if you go in there today. So this is a modern cast of A Man Called Jed Hall, which was produced in 1933 at the Egyptian Museum in Cairo at the request of Henry Welcome. This is a man who uh, was known as Jed Hall, the savior. He was a priest at the site of Athribis around 320 BC. And what's very special is that the inscription all over the statue and the base of the statue is a healing text. These are magical texts. These are texts that would protect you against or heal um, uh, injuries from snakes, scorpions, and other malicious creatures. And the idea was if you poured water over the statue, the water would harness the power of these inscriptions, then it would be collected in a basin at the base and used uh, to be drunk or for healing. The statue, this cast, was transferred to UCL from the Welcome Collection in 1964, but at that point the, the statue and the base were separated. Again, don't ask us why. I'm sure there was a very good reason. The base made its way to Swansea, where you can see upstairs in the museum today. And it is my absolute joy and pleasure to announce that after more than a year of work um, by Ken, but many years of conversations and other further work by Carolyn, by the then curator of the Petrie Museum, Professor Stephen Quirk, we have formally transferred the statue to the Egypt Centre, where he has been reunited with his base. So the, um, the original statue can now be seen in the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. Um, and this is much now what the display looks like upstairs. He's looking very happy and smug, I have to say. And it makes me just, yeah, it makes me beam. Um, in also to highlight the importance of the archive, we also hold the objects, the welcome cards relating to the statue. Uh, in the, the Petrie Museum. So we still have a link there and that's incredibly important to us. So please go and see him. Please say hello to him in his new home and I hope you enjoy the display. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anna. I, I feel like those, those wonderful slides of all those uh, sort of record cards are just kind of giving me some flashbacks of, of stress of doing my own research, of let go, going through that photography and actually having to go to the staff here at the Egypt Centre and just say, help me, help me unpick this. It's, it's a remarkable skill to 
delve into those records and, yep. and, and pick them. Absolutely. So thank you so much for sharing that and for, for welcoming um, the, 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 the new um, addition to our museum.